Good afternoon, everybody. This is Coach Anthony Williams, founder and CEO of Connected Athletics, a new Austin-based company that is focused on providing a platform to connect athletes with other athletes, connect athletes with college coaches during the recruiting process, and help athletes build a brand as they transition out of college and either into a career with pro football or into a career in their major. Uh, we've got another young prospect on the uh, podcast today. Uh, he's from right here in Rock, Texas with me. He's a class of 23 D lineman over at Stony Point High School. His name is Daniel Obina. Daniel, did I say that correctly? Yes, sir. Daniel, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Hey, let's jump right into it here. So we are in unprecedented times right now with uh, this COVID-19 stuff. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing to stay in shape, even though you can't do your workout with your team. Uh, yeah, me and my brother, Emmanuel Obina, we usually go, we have a field right next to us by the middle school, and then it's a lot of grass out there. So we do D-line drills so we can perfect, perfect my bend and everything. We do, uh, he acts like an O-lineman, and then we do one-on-one -on -one reps, and then we just condition a lot, you know. And we have a weight rack at our home. We do bench and squat, and I work out with Jake Chambers, too. Okay, great. So it sounds like you're not letting this uh, hold you back. What are you doing from a uh, uh, footwork and endurance standpoint? You getting some jogging in or doing some speed ladders? What are you doing there? Yeah, every morning I run a mile. Like at 7 o'clock in the morning, I run a mile. And then when we're doing football training, at the end of it, we run like 15 field runs for 100 yards so we can get my conditioning up. So I'll be ready for the next season. Okay. And, and Daniel, you, like I said earlier, you're class 23, uh, going into your sophomore year. Um, are you, is there a plan? Are you planning on being on varsity this year? Or do you know? Or what's that status right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to start next year. Start at D-Tackle Nose okay. next year. All right. Well, uh, before we jump into the interview, let's, let's bring up your freshman highlight video and have you kind of commentate uh, some of the plays you make in your highlight video, okay? Yes, sir. Let's go. Right. Bring it up. Just talk us through kind of what you're thinking, who you're playing, and what you're doing here. Yes, sir. Mean mugging. I like it. Okay. <laughs> What's going on uh, here? It's against Vista Ridge. I see they have a fullback in the end zone in the backfield, and then I shock and shed the block. And I'll go chase the quarterback and make the sack. But this play is against Westwood. I hit him with a forklift, and then I go make the play. He runs outside. I chase him down and make the roll tackle. Oh, this is against Westwood. I plant my foot in the ground, redirect, and go make the tackle. That's round rock. I re I'm reading the play. The he pulls the ball. Takes it and then I go take the tackle. This against Vista Ridge again. I push the old line back, push and pull. The running back gets the ball and I go tackle him. They put me at offensive tackle because they needed me to block so Cam can get a touchdown. And know, uh, I pancake people. <laughs> I like it. I'm pretty much a versatile defensive tackle. I can make tackles that. Our linebackers, if they need help, I'm all around the tackles everywhere. Okay, I like it. Yeah, uh, this play, oh, yeah, I see the pile. And then they're all trying to wrap him up. You know, I just go knock down the pile. Okay. Call me bulldozing. I go, yeah, I go make the play, and I go make the tackle. That's what I do. Okay. Let me pause it here. So, Dale, tell me, I've been watching your video several times, obviously. Tell me uh, – do you like playing inside, or can you play outside, too? I saw you playing in a zero technique. I saw you playing in a three technique. Do you have a preference? Yeah. I'm just a versatile defensive lineman. They can put me anywhere on the field. Whatever whatever coach needs, I'll play. Okay. And then, Dale, tell me about, uh, you know, well, let's switch over to academics real quick. Uh, you got a really good GPA here. Talk to mm -hmm. me about the importance that you put on uh, your academics. Oh, I, I like to study a lot, and I read a lot of books. So it really helps me with my academics because I know – Football is not forever. I'm going to have to have a plan after that. 
and I plan to either be a doctor or I plan to start my own business and I know academics is going to help me achieve that. I love hearing that. You've already got a plan in place. Now just gonna, time to go execute. Yes, Let's sir. talk about you as a player here. What would you consider some of your strengths and what are some of the things you're going to work on for your sophomore campaign? A lot of my strengths, I'm really, I have a lot of power in me. I lift a lot, and yeah, if you put somebody in front of me, I could take him down. And I have, I have good quickness around, and my get off is pretty elite. So when I get off, I'm already in the backfield before before my man moves on. And also, my weaknesses, the only really weakness I have is just I want to be around the ball more. So my goal next year is that even if the ball gets out of the backfield, and it gets down the field, I'm going to go chase him and make the tackle. I like it. So let's talk a little bit more specifics uh, about you, and let's talk about pass rush. Uh, what do you do? Do you have certain moves? How do you uh, – what's your mindset for your passer? Oh, my pass rush moves? That's really uh, – yeah, I love pass rush. I, I like spin. Like I can spin move. I could, I'm pretty much a versatile defensive lineman. They can put me against run block, pass block, anything. I like when uh, – what I like to do is I beat them with speed at first, and then when I get them to flip their hips outside, I take them inside and make an inside move straight to the ball. That's what I'm talking about. Good. I like to get you have different moves. You're not a one trick pony, then. Good. Yes, sir. And then what about run support? I saw a couple plays in your highlight video where I like when you took on the block, you saw the players heading outside, completely changed your angle, didn't get the field, just went down line of scrimmage and made it like the pass. Talk about your mindset against the run. The run block. Oh, that's my favorite. Whenever, oh, I'm getting triple team, double team, I'll hold my man, shock his shed, look for the ball, and then I'll go make the hit. Because if you run the ball up the middle, I'm, I'm taking it out. There's no holding me back. Okay. Yeah, we got you down for 5'11", 275. I don't know how old that is, but where are you right now as we are in down to the to May time frame? What did you, what's your height weight now? Uh, my, my height's still the same. I'm, so, I'm growing a lot, and I'm supposed to be an estimated. I check with my doctor. I'm estimated 6'3", six, 6'4", six, so I'm still growing a lot. And my weight, I've been doing a lot of weight training, and then I'm trying to I'm, – I lost a lot of baby fat, and then now I'm just beefing up. Okay. I love the honesty. And so do you have size in your family? Is your father, your brother, your grandfather, they have height too, your mom? Yeah, my whole dad's side of the family, they're like – six foot plus like six four six five they're all tall and my mom's decently tall she's like five six and then my brother yeah he's growing he's like six one six two and then yeah pretty much like my dad's pretty pretty big man six three two ninety and then yeah we pretty much pretty much runs in the family so looking forward to your senior year when you graduate and get ready to make that transition to college what do you think your height and weight will be my height, I should be, I should be like six three, six four by senior year, and my weight's around two ninety five. Okay, I'll let you go. To that I is good. To be like college, college shape by the time I'm my freshman. Okay, well, as we talk about that transition to college, I know it's early in the recruiting process, but uh, tell us who would you like to hear from, who are you hearing from, and at the end of it, where would you like to continue your, your education? Currently, I'm here from San Diego State. Colorado, uh, Southeastern Louisiana, Houston Baptist. They want me to come to their junior days. They want to see more of me next year. And then, yeah, I'm really getting a lot of attention right now from coaches. And yeah, that's basically it. And I would like to hear from like some major ACC and SEC schools this coming season. And I know my sophomore year, I've been training hard enough and I know it's going to pay off and then I'm gonna start getting the contacts. Okay. I love the plan. That sounds good. So you're still open and uh, still looking for more opportunities. I mean, you've got three more years on varsity. I mean, you're going to be a completely different player here in a couple of years. That's great to hear. Yes, sir. That's for um, sure. As you know, you've been following uh, the class 23 has got a lot of good talent in it. Tell me yes, how sir. you differentiate yourself as a D lineman in that class 23. In class 23, I differentiate myself because I have a different mindset than everyone else. Everyone wants to compete, but I want to dominate. I want to physically impose my will on my teammate or on my opponent so they can remember who I am every single play. I hit them hard in the mouth every single play. I run on all cylinders. I take care of the classroom. I take care of on the field. I never miss a rep. I'm just the overall best player that you can want on the team. And I lead, and I'm coachable. 
Okay, I like that. Okay. Uh, the importance um, of having a the player relationship with a coach. When I was coaching in high school and college, I, I need to know who my players are. Talk to me about your relationship with your position coach uh, and your D coordinator and possibly your head coach. Yeah, my position coaches are amazing. Like, they know everything. My coach, co defensive coach, Coach O'Day, he used to play for Oregon. He's – that's just the best coach I could ask for. And Coach Alexander, they teach me a lot of technique stuff, and they really got me right during – uh, during the fall and during the winter. When we were in the mat room doing all the drills, breaking ourselves every single day, they were like, oh, yeah, you got to get ready for this upcoming season because this is about to be my breakout year. I like it. Okay. Um, talk to me about non-football staff. Who's also had an impact on you, maybe a trainer, a teacher, a counselor, or somebody else on campus that has helped you be successful to where you are right now? Yeah, my counselors really get me right with my recruiting process. Uh, I talk to them about everything pretty much, and they're helping me with my grades. That's why my GPA is pretty good. They help me balance it out, you know. And my teachers, they always leave the door open for tutoring. So even if I have practice in the morning, they'll still stay after school so I could go complete my work if I didn't get to do it. Okay. Uh, you're still four years away, but I always like to ask a question. What are some of the things you're looking forward to being a student athlete on the college level? College, I'm just looking for the brotherhood and the relationship with the coaches, because that's really all you can ask for, because you only live once. And if you have that, uh, you're going to be a good player. And then my family, too, they really mean a lot to me. My brother pushes me every single day. And then I want I want college to be where they feel like it's home. Okay. Uh, have, you put, have you and your family worked on what your criteria is going to be? It's going to help you select what school you're going to go to? Is it based on distance from home, scheme? culture, family environment at the, at the university? Have you come up with that list yet? Yeah, my family, they want me to go to a school where they don't really mind about the distance. So like any like any distance, they let me go to college. And they want somewhere where like it has like my degree and what I want to major in and minor in because academics always comes first. And then uh, I, I'm really, good. I'm gonna get my brother's help on what college to go to because he, he's pretty much, his opinion is really valid to me. So wherever he wants me to go, then I'm gonna consider it. Okay, I like it. So you got a process in place. Um, let's talk about you away from football. Um, when you're not working out, when you're not playing football, what are some of your outside interests? Do you like to hunt? Are you a fisherman? You like to swim, like to go to the lake? What do you do in your spare time? My spare time, I really, I like reading books. Like To Kill a Mockingbird, that's one of my favorite books. And I really read or write poetry, listen to music. Okay. I don't really have video games, but I wish I did. I'll play them a lot. And, yeah, I'm kind of glad I don't have video games because it takes my time away for some things. But I could really focus on my craft on the football field. Well, again, I can tell you, I've interviewed a lot of kids and helped a lot of kids over my years. And uh, the kids that don't have video games usually have GPAs that look like yours. And the kids that yeah. have <laughs> video games, they're usually trying to get to where your GPA is. So I think you're yeah. doing okay. Uh, even you. though you may be playing video games, tell me about the, what, what are your, some of your favorite apps? Are you, are you a Twitter guy, Instagram, Snap? Are you a TikTok guy? What do you do on the phone? Yeah, I'm pretty much always on Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok. TikTok got a lot of funny videos, pretty much what I do when I'm not on the field and working out. Uh, Twitter, I like to see what, like, the recruited news is, how everybody's doing. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about the community. We live here in Round Rock, obviously. Tell me what you do to give back to the community. Are you involved in any boys and girls clubs? Are you involved in church? Or what are some things you want to give back? Oh, yeah. In my spare time, I actually go to the food bank and help hand out food to, like, the people who need it. Because it's not about me, it's about like the community. Because if you're not giving back to the community, you got it's it's not right. You gotta if you if you're up, you gotta have the other people around you up. And I like helping out people. Okay. Going back to your family, you mentioned your family a little bit. Are you the youngest? You're the middle or the middle brother? Where are you in the family? And tell me about the importance of family. Okay. I'm the middle child. <laughs> the middle child always get the least attention, but my 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 family makes it work. Like. We had some hard times, but they, my parents always like, they always help me. Like, even if we struggle, they always help me and they know that I'm up and they're always trying to help me get better. And uh, I, that's just mostly what really my important importance is. My family's right next to my heart. Okay. You think you're the middle. Who's the youngest? Is it a boy or a girl? It's a girl. My little sister, Brielle. 
Talk to me about your role. I know you're not the oldest brother, but tell me about your role as a big brother. How important is that to you to take, make sure you're taking care of your sister? Uh, talk to me about that. As a big brother, I really have to protect my sisters, you know, not let them get into any bad stuff. Just make sure I'm always there for them. And my sister, if she ever gets in trouble at school, I, I, I sit her down to talk to her. I was like, Michelle, all right, you got to talk to me. Uh, tell me what you what's going through. And then she'll, like, give me a hug at the end, and she'll be like, you're a good brother. I was like, thank you. And then, you know, I really like being there for them because you only have one family, and then you got to really be there for them at all times. Okay. Let's talk about uh, in the fall. Somebody's going to see you play for the first time, and they're going to say, man, that kid from Sunny Point reminds me of Aaron Donald. Who do you pattern your game off of uh, on the defensive side? I pattern my game off of people like Aaron Donald and Akeem Hicks because okay. Akeem Hicks is a really good run block. He can, he can run – he can stop run at all times, you know. He takes on the block, shock shed like it's nothing, and then destroys the running back. And then that's pretty much what I like doing. And Aaron Donald, he he interests me because he's a defensive tackle, but he moves like a wide receiver, somebody who's very versatile. He can jump, do all that stuff, and that's what I'm trying to build my craft up to so I can be someone like him. Okay, I like it. Uh, talk to me, going back to your parents, talk to me about um, – the importance of what your parents have taught you to help you be successful being a student athlete now? What, what are some of the things that they are on you about? My parents always talk to me about how everything's earned. Like, you can't be given no free handouts. Every day you have to, it's a grind. Because my mom, she sacrificed a lot for us. She sacrificed her career, and then she stays home and makes sure she takes care of us. I want to make sure that I make her proud and do everything just to give back to her, because she means a lot to me. Okay, I like it. Okay, truly respect that. Hey, playing football, as you know, is about overcoming adversity. Um, tell me about a time, either personally or on the football field, uh, that you had overcome some type of adversity. So at home, we go through a lot of tough times, and they, people could do bad stuff when they go through tough times, like do drugs and go steal or rob people. But I chose the hard way, and I got into football. I started playing football in the seventh grade, and then I, you know, every day I just fell in love with it. I just like to grind. I just like to, I like to like destroy everything on the field. Like that just, that just what really made me interest, you know. Okay, I like it. Okay, um, simple question, but every coach is going to ask you this: Why do you love football? I love football because you can physically dominate your opponent without any remorse every single play. Every single play, you can hit him hard in the mouth without him, even though he gets up, just hit him hard in the next play. So you can make sure that your opponent feels all that you put him through after. Okay. Talk to me about some of the things you're learning. What are some of the life skills you've learned from football at an early age? It really teaches you how to be a man. Like in our mat room, oh yeah, that's that. Uh, that's really where it goes down. We're all jumping up, rolling, breaking ourselves each and every day. And it teaches you not to quit whenever things get tough. When things get hard, you just got to stand up like a man and take everything that's thrown at you. You got to bend it to your will, and then you have to just be great. Okay. Um, you know, in football, it's important to understand, um, you know, uh, respect or other people's grind. You play with a lot of good players there. Braylon uh, James is somebody I had down in Florida with me. Uh, yes, talk about some of the players that you play with that you feel are being under-recruited, and talk about some players you've played against that you think are going to be some big-time guys in your class. Well, I play against people like Braylon and Cam, Cameron Cook. Cameron Cook is a real talent, and Terrence Shoals, he's a short linebacker, but the man can hit. And on my team, Tristan Stevens, He's one of the hardest workers that I know. Pushes me through it all the time. And my friend Ivan, he really helps me out. And we train together on the weekends and everything. And some people that I play against is this, my, my friend from Round Rock, Jackson and Ansel. They're really good players. And I know they're going to be big names in the future. What do you guys talk about uh, when you guys talk about, you know, using football to get an education and be successful in life? What are some of the things you guys talk about on your own with no coaches and parents around? Uh, we talk about really how how each other is doing, you know, like how what what our dreams are and what we want to accomplish in the future. We want to be big people because 
you see all the statistics saying that only one in a million people can make it, but we want to be those one in a million people. We just got to work hard just to get there. Okay. Tell me about, so you told me a little bit about your family, but tell me about some people outside of your family who have had a positive impact on your success as a student athlete. Uh, my neighbors, really. I have a neighbor named Marshall. He used to play football in Texas. He went to Michigan and played, and then he, he just gives me a lot of coaching tips, and then he, I like to work out with him a lot. And he's a real tough man, even though he's 65, but he looks like he's like 30. And we just lift all the time, and he really helps me out. My teachers, they make sure I'm on top of it, and they hold me accountable for everything. Like at Stony Point, we have these things called gray sheets, and it really holds us accountable to make sure that we're not messing around in class and we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Okay. Um, talk to me about the, some of the support you get on campus at Stony Point. Um, you know, is there a trainer, is there a coach, uh, your counselor or teacher that has helped you kind of stay focused on your academics and, and, and walk in that straight line? Yeah, uh, my coach is Coach Hayes. He's the academic coach. He really pushes us to academics, academics, academics. Because if you don't have academics, you can't have the sports out of it. That's just the plain truth. And Coach Sabal can make sure that I'm pushing myself in the weight room and I'm pushing myself outside of the weight room and in life. He just teaches us how to overcome adversity and everything. And whenever I were, it was, it was Max Day, he was really pushing me just to get a good max, and I ended up being on the record wall on in Stony Point. Okay, I like it. Hey, um, what are the sports you're very, very talented athlete? What other sports have you played besides football? Do you play basketball, baseball? Do you throw the shot or discus or anything? Yeah, I'm in track and field. Uh, next year, I'm going to be on varsity team, and I went to Junior Olympics two years in a row and medal. Okay. And, and both the shot and the discus? Yeah, I do shot, discus, and javelin. Okay. Tell, tell me about, you know, all college coaches love uh, football players that run track and compete in track. Tell me how that's have a, had a positive influence on you playing football by, by competing uh, in track. Yeah, shot put and discus and all the field events really teaches me how to be explosive off the line and everything because you have to get low, load up, and explode out of where you're positioned. really teaches you how to have fast twitch muscles, and everything just to be able to move fast and explode out. You have to be able to exert energy into people. That's what the D line's all about. Okay. Talk to me as you're going to be a sophomore, probably starting to play a lot on varsity this year. It's hard to leave when you're just a sophomore. Talk to me about how you manage uh, watching and respecting your upperclassmen leaders, but still being a leader to the, to the young kids behind you, the freshmen and the eighth graders coming through. Yeah, the upperclassmen are really cool. My brother's one of them. He really, like, he humbled me from when I was in sixth grade. Because when I was in sixth grade, I was, like, this high-headed kid. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I can do whatever I want. But then he humbled me. He made sure I knew that I had to work hard for everything. And that's what I've been doing since I was a little kid. And Jake, he's a real good leader. Teaches me everything I know about lifting. And they really motivate me in the weight room. Because I see, I see them lifting like over, like, 300 pounds. I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to be like them. And I want to beat them. So everything they do, I just try to do better than them. Okay. And then tell me how that's translating down. How are you uh, paying it forward and helping out those uh, freshmen and eighth graders that are coming to the oh, yeah. program? The eighth graders, they really look up to me. A lot of them, they text me and they're like, yeah, you want to train or do something? I was like, oh, yeah, of course. Because, you, you know, if they're going to be part of our future team, and I want the Stony Point Tigers to be a team that's remembered all the time. So I always work out with them, Tommy Ronder and uh, KJ Klein. They always ask me if they want to work out, and I'm like, yeah, of course. And I go work out with them, and I give them tips on how they can start the recruitment and all that stuff. Okay. So our district has gotten tougher. We've added huddle this year, as you know. It's going to be a, an even tougher district. Have you guys talked about some team goals you guys have as a team for this year? Yeah, our team goals, we want all most of our defensive players – my goal is to be all district and all state. And I know that's a hard goal to reach for, but I'm willing to do anything to accomplish it. And I know Jake and my brother, we're all ready for the contact. Like, that's just what we love. And we know playing huddles, that's going to be a hard game, but we're prepared for everything. We're going to be pl playing Landon Watson, one of the best players in the country. But it, he, he bleeds like I bleed, so there's no reason I should be afraid of him. 
Okay. You know, uh, another thing that's important to college coaches is understanding how players learn. Talk to me about, uh, tell these coaches, what kind of learning style do you prefer, visual, verbal, or physical? I'm a very physical learner and also visual. Because if I see something like three times, I could easily repeat it exactly how the person did it. And if I'm doing hands-on learning, it's even faster. So I could pretty much learn any way. And if you tell me to do something, I could do it anyway. So I could learn it any way. I'm just a versatile learner and player. Okay. Simple question again. We talked about it earlier, but uh, why do you think your game is going to translate to the college level? My game is going to translate because I have pretty good size and I'm sure to keep going. And I know I work. It doesn't matter who's in front of me. I work harder than everyone else. Uh, like I came up from struggles, hard times. And that's just what built me and from the bottom to the top. And then I know I have to do whatever it takes just so I can get invites and offers. And then I have to work hard every single day. Okay. Well, we're going to finish this up with, uh, we talked about it earlier, but uh, in business, there's this thing called an elevator pitch. 30 seconds in front of somebody who's very influential to your future. Let's say you're talking to a lot of these head coaches from top programs. In 30 seconds, tell them about Daniel Bina and what you're going to bring to their program. Well, my name is Daniel Bina. And I'm probably one of the best players and most physical people you're going to meet. I, lit I bring it on all cylinders. You can't really find anybody else like me. And I know what tough times bring. And I know how to face adversity. And I really, I, I am that player that you want on your team. If you, give me an, if you give me a chance and you offer me, trust me, you're not going to regret it. I have a good GPA, good size, and I'm just going to keep growing and keep perfecting my technique till I'm at the top. Yeah, that might be one of the best elevator pitches I've ever heard, young man. That is outstanding. Hey, I look forward to watching you play this fall. If you need anything, definitely reach out to me in any way. And uh, be safe during these, these times, and we'll see you in the fall on the sidelines, okay? Yes, sir. See you. All right, thank you. See you. Thank you.